Welcome. Uh, this is the fourth annual Silver Summit Conference and my name is Sherry Snelling and I'm the executive producer for this year. And what you're going to see is a lot of very exciting information uh, that we want to talk to you about. Uh, really what this whole conference and whole day is about is really about the lifestyle of the boomers and the silvers who represent a hundred million Americans who have a purchasing power of $2.3 trillion. So if you don't have a marketing plan, a product development plan, a customer service support system for this segment of society, you're really missing the boat. And I think our speakers are going to bring that home to you today. One of the things that you're going to see that we're going to do a little differently is um, something that we felt was really important when it comes to this whole boomer and silver's audience. And there's two things that really came about, if, if you think about it, with the boomers. And that was um, the advent of rock and roll. The second thing that you're going to see is we also have a setup here that's very similar to a talk show format. So all of our panelists have been practicing with each other, and they're going to do their presentations, but they're also going to be interacting with each other and engaging in a dialogue about what you're going to see. Um, and again, we know that when it comes to this boomer audience, we all grew up with you know, the birth of television, the birth of rock and roll. So we thought this would add a lot of energy and excitement to our day. So a couple things that I want to go through just really quickly in terms of our rules of the road. First of all, if you wouldn't mind please silencing your, your cell phones, putting them on vibrate. We are videotaping all of the sessions, and as a courtesy to all of our speakers, we don't want to have any interference from the video. You will be able to see, by the way, all of these panel sessions on our YouTube channel, which is silversummit.com on YouTube. The second thing is we will have a Q&A at the end of each panel. So I just wanted you to be aware, as each panelist ends, they're going to go right into the next speaker, but at the end of the panel, we will have Q&A for all of you to ask questions. Second thing, of course, most importantly, is the food situation. As you see, we do have some service in the back right now. We also will be serving a box lunch at 1220. So if you're still with us, you're going to get your free lunch. And then last but not least, we have a generous donation from SIVA of digital photo frames and digital photo systems and we'll be doing some raffle prizes. So if you stick with us throughout the day, you might win one of those great prizes. The other thing I wanted to mention is for the first year, we've done the Sterling Awards. And these are awards that are given to products that have shown excellence in supporting the lifestyles of Americans 50 plus. So that ceremony will begin sharp at 1.30 p.m. We'll be giving out the five awards to our different category winners. In addition, we just ended our online, uh, if you want to call it the People's Choice Award, which we're calling the Silver's Choice, and that award will be given as well. So that does start at 1.30, and we want to thank the generous um, sponsorship of AARP to make these Sterling Awards happen. And speaking of thank yous, as you can read on the screen, we had the wonderful support of numerous sponsors for this Silver Summit Conference. For any of you who haven't yet been down on the show floor, I know obviously this is the first day of CES, so everything just started, but please visit our exhibit down in the Living in Digital Times Tech Zone area. We have wonderful exhibits. A lot of the speakers that you hear today have booths down on the floor. Um, and this conference is absolutely not possible without the wonderful generosity of our sponsors. In addition, we want to thank a lot of our media partners who worked with us uh, to promote the conference and get the word out. And again, <laughs> absolutely. Uh, thank you to our generous donations from SIVA, also Stephen Riley and his new book uh, from Vibrant Nation, and uh, Dr. Gary Small, who has a brand new book out uh, called the Alzheimer's Prevention Program, also donated some books for our speakers. And then I want to give some special recognition to actually two women who, who couldn't be here this morning, but the first person you all know very well, Susan Ayers Walker, she was really the creator and founder of the Silver Summit and the Digital Health Conferences 
that started uh, four years ago. And um, she just has built a wonderful foundation, made it obviously very easy for me to kind of come in and, and continue to, to make this a really uh, tremendous thought leader co uh, conference for all of you. And then Robin Raskin, who again, most of you know, who runs Living in Digital Times. The, ma the woman is amazing. She has 11 different conferences going on this week, and this is just one of them. So special recognition to these two great women that I work with. So now, for those of you who are boomers, and, and let's just have a show of hands. Who's, who's either a boomer or beyond? Fantastic. So most of you know what this slide is all about. Those of you who are Gen X, Gen Y, listen up. But we grew up with television, and I grew up watching The Ed Sullivan Show. Um, and one of the things, again, to bring us back to our lifestyle theme, one of the things that Ed Sullivan did so well is he really was uh, the, the first, if you will, to bring about all of these new great music, uh, rock and roll bands. You know, that's where er Elvis Presley made his TV debut. That's where the Beatles made their TV debut. So as Ed said, we have a really big shoe for you today. <laughs> Now I'm going to introduce some, uh, somebody that I'm sure a lot of you watch on MSNBC. She is a fantastic, wonderful uh, news anchor and journalist. She's been with the MSNBC group for 13 years. Her new show is called Weekends with Alex Witt. And she has done interviews with presidents and heads of state. She's reported on things like Hurricane Katrina, uh, the September 11th tragedies, and also the most recent 10th anniversary um, commemoration, uh, obviously things that are going, uh, happening with the economy. And again, playing back into our TV theme today, what we're doing is we have two fantastic keynote speakers. The first is Emilio Pardo, who is the Executive Vice President and Chief Brand Officer of AARP. And what we thought would be fun is, while we know Emilio can get up here and have all of your attention for the next 30 minutes, we thought it would be very interesting to have Emilio and Alex have a conversation and talk a little bit about why this is so important. And so with that, I'm going to introduce Alex Witt to come up to the stage. <laughs> and also Emilio Pardo. And they will be our first keynote. We're we're calling these keynotes Conversations with the Change Agents. So I think it'll be very interesting and certainly very educational. So here we go. OK, well, as they say in television, I will do a little pause. I do have something else I want, that I want to tell you that's very important. In addition to all of our wonderful panels, I forgot to mention Again, playing into our TV theme, we are going to take uh, a, a, an emergency break, if you will, with three really important speakers who are going to talk to you about three segments of the Boomer Senior Lifestyle that's really important. The first is going to be Stephen Riley, and he's going to talk to you about Boomer women, their power and their influence. The second is Andy Cohen, and he's going to talk about family caregivers. And the third speaker will be Fe Fred Alegriza from Talican, and he's going to talk about grandparenting and the importance of intergenerational connectivity. So now that we're ready with our first keynote, here is Alex Witt and Emilio Pardo. Hi, can y'all hear me? Yeah, okay. Um, thank you, Sherry. I'm going to let y'all in on a little bit of a secret here. I work for MSNBC, and there's this little event going on in New Hampshire today. <laughs> and. Um, of course, MSNBC being the place for politics, we were all over that. Sherry is one of my dearest friends. She and I were sorority sisters together at USC. Don't ask her about that because it's going to denigrate the way you think about me in terms of a voice of authority on MSNBC. <laughs> <laughs> um, but she asked me to be here, and I said yes without even checking the political calendar. And frankly, I'm very, very glad to be here. I think we have a good idea of how things are going to end up in New Hampshire in terms of the number one spot. It's a battle for number two, but we're not here to talk about politics, which is what I do all the time. So we're here to talk about technology for life. That is what is so cool about this Silver Summit. It's technology for life that we're discussing. We're not discussing technology for aging. I mean, who wants to talk about that? It's all about changing the way we approach it, changing our thought process, changing the way we spin it, 
but it's it's all about the same thing and we're all going there we are all aging and how do we capture this and make it work for us so no better person to speak with than this gentleman right here Emilio Pardo from AARP whom Sherry uh, introduced and we are going to have a video when that is ready to show you about kind of what a bit of AARP is doing but before we we get to this Emilio and thank you so much for being here heading on out from Washington to do all this um, when we talk about that you and I were sitting in that speakers booth area technology for life how much does that change the approach, the feeling, how much does it make it more palatable for people to talk about technology for life rather than just technology for aging? Well, that's uh, it's a great premise. And first of all, good morning to everybody. Thank you for, for being here. It's, uh, it's, a, it's a great moment uh, to be at this show because what you're seeing okay. is exactly that. It's living versus aging. And you're probably going to hear that a lot. And it doesn't mean that we're not about aging issues and we have to deal with the aging process. Mm -hmm. But frankly, uh, you know, years ago I was accused of you know, being the person who said, you know, 50 is the new 30. Yeah. Well, the reality is 50 is the new 50. And there is that shift, that paradigm shift of living versus aging. And uh, our curve of life has changed. And boomers um, are changing everything, mm -hmm. even in, uh, continuing into, into the future. But technology for life is also about dealing with what is happening in America today, not just in boomers, but for the first time, we're seeing that you have these generations, the boomer generation and the millennial generation, right. that we're sharing music. Mm -hmm. We are sharing at times, especially in my case, I have a 14-year-old. I've got a 17-year-old um, daughter. Right. She's constantly well, programming my iPod. Stealing the, yeah. the, the sneakers, right? Yeah. And uh, the music and uh, sharing back and forth. This multi-generational conversation, it's an important element of design. It's also an important element on how do we deal with living in an environment where we're shifting from a consumer or service economy to a creator economy. Mm -hmm. So now we have to deal with how do we create value? And in the boomer segment, we not only have to create value, but we have to figure out what this value and purpose and meaning and what our passion. So there's a lot of, there's a lot of stuff in that word life. Yeah. But it is, it is a pathway, I believe, in being relevant to this population, which uh, has a little bit to, to say. So. Can I ask how many of you out there are marketers? We just raise your hand if you're marketers. Awesome. This is so for you. I mean, are, just with a nod of heads, are you seeing that, that this is the kind of thing? I mean, you're changing. It's, it's the same thing. We're all talking about how to get from one decade to the next, but it's a new spin. It's a positive one. Are you seeing that? Is, is, it, is it a challenge for you? It is to, to get the positive spin. Talk to him for just a little while, and you'll be <laughs> you'll be all set to go. Let me assure you. If I had a chance to rename the boomer generation, mm -hmm. I would call it the opportunity generation. And in that spirit of opportunity lies the the innovation and, and this whole concept of what what the population is experiencing. Frankly, is a new life stage. Um, and I'm not sure if we have it here, but do we have? Uh, the little slides. Um, if we can uh, tee up our, our first slide. Could you turn the sound up, please, for the hard of hearing? Yeah, that, yeah, or that or we will speak. <laughs> Thank you for that. We will. There we go. We're getting the cue. Um, as we, as we wait for this slide, um, something to think about is the word reinventing as opposed to reimagining. Sometimes to, the concept of reinventing seems overwhelming and it can stop you in your tracks because it, it, it's daunting. But reimagining allows you time to think, to be creative, to sort of pursue a passion. And that's what you see all over AARP because that's what you want reflecting this 50 plus generation. Spot on. Most of the, the issue here is what is the language? And as marketeers, you know this better than anybody else. What, what is the language that is going to be relevant in my life in order for me to connect with you? Frankly, we just did a study um, about what, what is this new language of aging? And by the way, the study, when we started the study, it was called the new language of aging. Mm -hmm. When we were done with it, the new language of living. I knew you were getting rid of that word aging. Yeah. Well, we're not getting rid of aging. Uh, <laughs> but you don't have to focus are, on absolutely. it. Absolutely. And, and in there, there, was, there, were two, there were two insights that I wanted to, uh, to share. Um, and there were small, subtle insights of language. But for instance, uh, we have lifelong learning programs 
uh, lifelong learning seminars, lifelong learning books, lifelong learning tracks, whatever. And the audiences and the kids said, you know, don't call it lifelong learning. Just call it learning. Mm -hmm. Lifelong, my God, that's like forever. Right. right? And who wants to, to do this in, in these kind of tracks? Learning versus lifelong learning, there is a subtlety that, that begins to tell a story about what language is about. Same thing with reinvention. Reinventing is a very big deal. It's, it's huge to have to reinvent. However, reimagining begins to give you a clue as to what do I do now with my gifts, my and values. You have a couple of graphics that are we able to put those right. up at so, this yeah, point? There it is. Here's one. It, it's a, it, this will greatly illustrate what we're talking about here. So we were talking about this last night, and we thought, let, let's share this with you uh, mm -hmm. in this audience. This was a graph that uh, we mapped out, uh, and this is a, a graph of your discovery of your life, right? Everybody familiar with this? This is the way we, we have lived uh, in our lives. You start as a child, you're discovering adolescence, God knows. Uh, you get into your work life, you're working, you amass your, your family, or you're doing work, and then you get to that proverbial moment where it was time for you to retire, and you know, got the retirement party, got the watch, and you went into retirement, and you expire. Uh, well, that's great. 1940s and 50s, that's a great curve. A lot has happened since then. If you flip over to the next slide, here's the new curve on what you're feeling and what you're doing, right? And then from the boomer perspective, you hear about this longevity gift, right? The 19 years of longevity gift. Well, guess what? As boomers, they don't want it at the end. We want it right in the middle of that place, right? And there's also the retirement stage. People can't retire, don't want to retire, or are not able to retire. Right. So the whole emotionally and fiscally and speaking. Fiscal, right. right. So the 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 concept of retirement has shifted. So you see now all of a sudden that same patterns as a child and adolescence you're still discovering, but then you get right about that 46, 47 years old, and you start asking yourself, what's next? Meaning too. Meaning. What are you looking for? Purpose. All of a sudden kicks in into high gear. Not quite sure why, but it's it's there. And that what's next, that moment that, by the way, I call that a little dip, not the midlife crisis, but <laughs> midlife rally. It's a rally, right? It's a lot easier than midlife uh, crisis, but a midlife rally. And, and there is this aspirational approach. Well, this gives you a clue at where the mindset perhaps is. By the way, this curve is not just a boomer curve. Um, I, I'm beginning to see this also in younger generations, mm -hmm. right? It's this whole concept of this new life stage that um, that we're all entering to, and the economy has helped that mm -hmm. a little bit. Mm -hmm. The recession, I don't call it medical, the, the reckoning. The reckoning, right. Um, what's interesting, too, is that I see people that are about this age, the 45 to 50s, and the conversations they're having between themselves, peer to peer, talking about where they are in their lives and where they want to go next, it's as if they're looking for information, validation, brainstorming, all of that. How important is that? That's huge. You're, you're spot on. It's, um, you know, it's a validator. Mm -hmm. So the peer to peer allows not just for a validation of information, but frankly, from a boomer perspective, what are other people like me? that are going through this like I am. And come to where I am, don't expect me to come to you. So as a marketeer, you know, it is, it's important to understand that the shift is huge. This movement is a huge movement to come to where I am. You know, apps is a great example. You know, mm -hmm. wherever it is that I'm at, I, I just ran into an app the other day called uh, Unstuck. Great app. <laughs> uh, I can use that almost every single day. But, uh, <laughs> It's, it's that concept of peer-to-peer -peer as a validator, but also as a way of connecting. And technology and what we're doing here today is one of those validators that we need to design for all, but also for me. Give us some examples of who is doing this well, designing technology that will not be overwhelming or too difficult to use, um, that will appeal to all spectrums. And I mean, Apple is, comes to mind for me. Sort of a gold standard there. Yeah. Uh, I'm sure here in the audience, there's, there are several uh, great examples. Uh, I think the Apple uh, platform is a, is a good example, but all tablets, right, that mobility. Um, 
it's clear, and uh, you know, most of the purchases of those smartphones, devices, and the Apple devices or the tablet devices are are boomers. Mm -hmm. you know, they're they have the they have the, the cash to be able to do that. Right. right? Uh, having said that, it's about design that is multifaceted and multi-generational as well. So you're seeing a lot of um, seniors in the senior category using a tablet, but also a four-year-old mm -hmm. to, to learn how to uh, read or play. That, that sense of discovery is an interesting connection for these devices. And that discovery ties to this whole concept of you know, growing and learning yeah. and whatnot. So designing for that I think it's uh, it's important. I think they're doing a great job. Well, for instance, I mean, he'll tell you tell the story about Apple TV. You just got this, and you and your son great. are hanging out together and looking with interest at these same things with ease. Exactly. I mean, it's um, it's one of those moments that you think back in generations. You know, how many times did you do this with your parents? Uh, but yeah, we just got an Apple TV uh, box. Mm -hmm. By the way, no instructions, or at least my son took it away from me. It was just plug, and here we are. Uh, but there, there is a moment we were literally within five minutes, you're surfing, and we ran into a YouTube video hmm. that was about, I don't know if you've heard, this uh, young man, Ben Breadlove, uh, who had a terminal uh, heart condition, and he had done a couple of videos uh, about his life experience and how he cheated death four, four times, and 17 years old, by the way, uh, 18 years old. And uh, the video was done uh, three days before Christmas. He passed away at Christmas. His parents didn't know the video was done until after. So wow. there's a moment, right, on technology that is a very, and my son and I are sitting there, you know, bawling. Yeah, <laughs> Just of course. Looking at this thing. But those moments are, are precious moments that I think technology can now expand that connection, that human connection. So yes, it's bringing us together, but we also have to understand that technology can isolate us. It does, and I have to tell you, uh, I was at a restaurant a couple of years ago, and there was uh, Nicole Ritchie was there with some friends. She walked in, I'm like, oh, that's cool, it's Nicole Ritchie, was there in Beverly Hills, and I watched Nicole and three of her friends sit down around a table, and they each had their iPhones or Blackberries or whatever. There was no discussion. I thought, oh, how nice, Nicole and her friends. And I watched them not utter a word between themselves. And there, it was like this the whole time. Food came, a couple of bites, back to this. I was shocked. I was sitting with my mother. I go, watch this. And I'm not trying to call it Nicole Ritchie because you see it all around you all the time. It just was, it, it stayed in my mind because it was Nicole Ritchie. And I thought, you know, it, there is an isolationism that is coming from this as well. I mean, you, you have to be cognizant of that. So where do you find the line? How do you, how do you find, um, I guess, the, the ability to go between being isolationist and getting all your information and sharing and being part of the world that you want to be so much a part of? Yeah. Well, clearly, we don't know yet because we're, we're right in the middle of that, right. of that phenomenon. And I believe um, it's not just a, a boomer generation phenomenon. I think it's a multi-generational uh, issue. But if, if we... If we take what's happening in design today, and especially in technology, it is for that creator economy concept that I believe we're moving into. And the creator economy is going to push us to design and bring to the, to the 50 plus a set of tools and services that tap who you are right there. Not reinvent yourself, mm -hmm. but who you are. So whether you do that in peer-to-peer -peer, or you do it by yourself, it's okay. But the audience and, and the market is demanding that. And that creator economy, well, you know, I talked about it last night. It's yeah. a serious issue. I mean, the, the average 51-year-old that just lost that job last year, that job will not come back. They have to reimagine what their gifts are. They have to work, right? They have to reimagine what their gifts are. They have to reimagine what their value is and create that new value. So we're seeing this in huge numbers. Uh, in order to create value, uh, and by the way, if after a year of not having a job, you start thinking, what do I do now? And forget about what's next. It's like, now what? But now, if you can create a business, if the technology can help me, 
meet somebody else, I have an idea, mm -hmm. you have a, uh, a skill set, and technology can connect me, make it easier for me to get there. I think you're going to see that in millions and millions of people. Well, you're also going to see people taking ideas and things that they are passionate about things that they have, even if they're not necessarily trained knowledge-wise or, or practicing that which they did in their careers prior to, say, being let go or, or starting to think about what they want to really do with their life in their mid-late 40s. You're finding people being creative and being able to, but the passion they bring with it, the desire to work, the desire to make a difference, and it can often be just a little niche. That is what is so encouraging about this. You can have one niche, hone into it, and create tremendous success for yourself. Well, you know, I, uh, I want to pick up on a word you said, passion. Mm -hmm. um, so, and uh, this is a little dangerous territory going in uh, such an intelligent uh, audience in technology, but what, 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 I, what we're seeing is that the next generation of services are going to insert a new uh, passion purpose graph. So what I mean by that is, you know, uh, if you look at social media, you have your social graph products and services and your interest graph. So you have a bunch of, you know, the interest graph services, uh, bowling or, you know, uh, cooking uh, interest meets social graph. And there are some great folks right now who are out there like uh, Groupon and um, uh, Living Social that are combining those things. The key is going to be to add the third graph, which is that purpose graph. So if you have purpose graph, social graph, and interest graph, I believe now you have the boomers really right at their sweet spot. Because of that purpose and that meaning, now all of a sudden has become heightened. And you know, that curve, mm -hmm. it's about the difference between health and financial security to retire, health and financial security to live your best life. And those three graphs, I believe, are coming together in a very profound way. And those that are going to design towards that, I think are gonna be very rewarded. Up until now, we've not seen in the advertising industry the focus on much beyond the 18 to 49. That demographic has been it, as if at, when you hit 49, you don't count anymore. What we know is that those that are 49 and over often have the money that they've saved, the, the expendable money to go and you know, spend on whatever it is they want to. How much are you seeing a difference in the approach to that. And, and all of you as well. I mean, do yeah. you, before Emilio answers, do you see that now all of a sudden you've got marketers, you have advertisers, and they're trying to focus in on this segment of the population? Are you seeing a shift? More conversations. More conversations. More conversations. So we're at the beginning of this shift? I ask you, it's your business. <laughs> well, that's true. Yeah, no, it, it, it is true. We are seeing that. I know at um, NBC, we, I actually, uh, hosted, anchored a, a show called Daily Cafe for seven weeks, which was a, a trial show we'd see. And the way I described it to people was, um, it was as if it was the Today Show, but geared towards people. I believe the demo was either 45 or 50 and above. And I said, just in a colloquial way, you know, I wouldn't necessarily be interested for our viewers to interview Miley Cyrus, but I'd interview her dad and talk about sort of how he helped bring her up and that, that sort of thing. That was just a, a way to describe it. It was great, and that was two and a half years ago, and we're talking about bringing this back into production because we see that you want to have shows that are specifically targeted to the health issues of people of a certain age, the travel issues as well. I mean, Jody, your associate from ARP who is, uh, who's here with you, we were talking about the fact that leisure travel and those that actually go and do leisure travel these days, 80% of them are the boomers and the silvers. You're 15 up and you're the ones who, you're not in the slave you know, grind travel. mode and you're the ones out there traveling. So you've got your Kayaks, Expedia's, Travelocities. Are, are these companies going to be changing more so that they, they are sure that they will encompass you know, all spectrums of the population? Well, I certainly hope so. Um, because okay. if they don't, Great. they'll be out. Well, they'll be out. I mean, I think today, if you ignore that segment, it's at your own peril. Mm -hmm. You will not succeed. Um, and it's our part of our mission to make sure that we, we foster as many um, of these uh, uh, services and change so that the 50 plus can thrive and live their best life. So from, from our perspective, we're, we're hoping that it comes sooner rather than later. Although, you know, I, and, and I'm curious what the audience thinks about this, I have seen a shift, and I've seen the beginning of a shift in these rooms where advertisers are, are coming in, and, and it may have a little bit to do with 
a lot of the executives are entering that boomer I agree. segment. I agree. The people well. that are making uh, the decisions, right? And those They're the ones saying, hey, what about and, me? They're right. looking in the mirror and thinking, hmm, <laughs> what's going to affect me? Right. I mean, they're living. They're living that new way of life. And uh, obviously, we all know in this room the, the power of, of this segment to, to purchase. So there's, there's that as, as well. But I think there's, a, there's an interesting movement uh, that, that is happening already. Is there technology out there? I think I just uh, went down. I will speak loudly. Maybe I turn this no, off. We there we yeah, go. Is there technology out there that can really help people develop themselves? I mean, literally look inward, help them get through this this period where they're sort of reevaluating what to do with life. I mean, is that something that is an area that you think is there's growth there and something you can capitalize upon? I, yes, I, I actually believe that, that we need more of those uh, platforms, those services that can help you almost, um, almost in inner uh, uh, exploring, uh, exploratory. So it's, it's discovery of self in order to then succeed. And I think the boomers are entering that, that stage of uh, the, the reimagining stage of, of uh, of innovation, and uh, I think peer-to-peer -peer networks are going to be important in this segment. I think apps, there's got to be an app for everything, uh, mm -hmm. and there will be a lot more of those uh, that help you connect, but I, but I warn against just connecting in one of those simple graphs or, you know, uh, if it's just social. I think what we need to do is connect with purpose, and whether it's, I need a job, um, or, you know, I'm trying to deal with caregiving. And on the caregiving space, I think it's a low-hanging fruit. I mean, I, as we all know, there's millions. I mean, the, the, the latest number of caregivers in America is, is huge. Don't forget the caregiver. The caregiver also needs the support and the technology and the help me deal with yeah. it. Uh, the average 49-year-old caregiver woman is dealing not just with caregiving for whomever, but you know, I, I call it the, uh, the, uh, the, the triple-decker sandwich. It's no longer the sandwich generation mm -hmm. issue for her taking care of, of mom or dad or taking care of junior, is taking care of me. Yeah. Because that 50-year-old just went to the doctor for the first time and yeah. got a pill for the first time and going, oh, what is this? Yeah. Now I'm taking care of myself. Where are the apps that are gonna help me manage that yeah. part of my life? Well, I'm going to give a, a shameless plug for Sherry. She's got caregivingclub.com. Caregivingclub.com is a great resource you can go to. And I've become so familiar with this exact issue because it's what she's kind of focused her life's work on. And, and you see so much growth potential there. But in terms of, from the AERP perspective, five years, ten years from now, what direction do you think you are going in? What kinds of things do you think will have the greatest kind of change? And, and what do you hope to accomplish in this next five to ten years? Well, clearly for us, this concept of health and financial security to live your best life is a, is a big deal. Um, we, we're ushering an age where if you um, think about your work life, it is now shifting to your life work. Mm -hmm. Because you not only have to work, by the way, the average is this statistic uh, floored me. The average person in America today now believes that they have to work until 79, 80 years old. 80 years old. Imagine that. that. Have to because fiscal? Either was have to, uh, well, in many or, cases in this particular environment, right. yes, you have to, but also want to. Yeah. But the have to is the larger number. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, this reckoning of this recession has, has created that. But that 80, I mean, think about a 50-year-old today in America that is facing another 20 years of work. That is a new phenomenon. Multiply that by a few million. And so we're looking at what are the societal changes that need to take place, right? What is the social change that will allow this, this new life stage to evolve? And what are the... Uh, services that we can promote and, and help push forward, um, uh, not that we will promote them, but that we can encourage people to help and support the 50 plus. Mm -hmm. So that, that's a big shift 
that we have to be uh, paying attention to. Well, I'm glad you're the guy at AARP doing it. Honestly, <laughs> talk with us, Scott. You're blessed. You come away with so many great ideas and such a positive spin. Um, are there any questions? I know that we have a fairly tight uh, schedule here. So if any of you have questions for Emilio or politics with me, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> That's OK. So, who's going to go down there? Um, we, yep, we have a microphone. Or you can bring the mic to someone. Hi, thank you. Um, I'm in the financial services industry, and the um, right the spin and the optimism is great. But when I run focus groups and I talk to boomers about their retirement savings, I have the most depressed people oh, yeah. in the yeah, room absolutely. that I've ever seen. <laughs> yeah. And when I talk about right the boomer vibe and all of the optimism and reinventing <laughs> yourself or reimagining yourself, mm -hmm. it falls on deaf ears in my mm -hmm. organization because. Boomers have been hit by this recession so hard, they've watched their retirement savings mm -hmm. deplete. And so, and I talk to affluent people, right? right? So people who are bringing in $100,000 a year. And the, the group of people that we always thought of as recession proof mm -hmm. have not been recession proof. So I'm wondering if you could shed some light on how you kind of navigate through this kind of reality versus what I'd love to imagine my life as being because the reality is, yes, I might have, um, you know, my health, I am going to be living longer and that's great, but holy bleep, now I have to support myself until I'm 100 years old. Yeah. How is that going to work? So, <laughs> if, right, if you could comment on that, that'd be great. Absolutely. And by the way, we're, we're, we're seeing very similar things. Uh, in fact, that, that pain point in America today is, is huge. Oh. Uh, it is also forcing that conversation that I, that I was uh, talking about, about having to go inward a little bit more. Because you're right, I mean, some of the, the systems are not there, the traditional solutions are not there. Um, but a, you know, an average 55-year-old uh, that has lost that job and doesn't have a, you know, now all of a sudden their 401ks are depleted, or they took care, they were the bank of mom and the bank of dad for their families. So they're, they're completely at a moment where you have to reach out and figure out how do I retool myself a little bit. You have to. The alternative is, is a very bleak one, right? So what we're seeing is that there's a dearth of guidance systems. So for someone like you and your organization to provide a guidance system that helps me, once again, meet me where I am. Don't tell me that everything is going to be rosy. By the way, you're still optimistic. Some of our focus groups are across the country. Um, in the same scenario, you still have an optimism that you can tap inside of that generation. But where are the guidance systems? So if you can come up with those guidance systems to help me understand what my, what's next step is, forget about a moment. <laughs> Some people are saying, get me through. By the way, when we talk about reimagining or what's next, it's not, you know, get me through the next year. It's get me through this day, get me through this week. So there, there is a new spectrum that you have to design for. On one end is fear, and on the other end is aspiration. And somewhere between fear and aspiration, you will find that you have to meet that market and that audience. And so yes, I'm, I'm totally with you on the, on the desperate uh, part of it, but I will tell you that that conversation is happening in every corner of America today. So how you design for it. Hi, my name is Marcy Rogo, I founded uh a company that has to do with uh, social networking online and retirees. Um, and you mentioned earlier how important, how important peer groups will be for boomers and social networking. So I was wondering if you've heard of eons.com, which is like a Facebook that was built for seniors by the founder of monster.com, mm -hmm. and the fact that it failed. And I was wondering, or it's not really gone anywhere, and I was wondering why you think that is. That was Jeff Taylor, right? Uh, yeah. Uh, monster. Yeah, uh, you know, I'm not sure. I. Uh, what, what actually uh, happened there. But um, you know, early on, I believe, they, they uh, launched with a um, number of services. But one that was, was prominent in their site was obits, right? Uh, obits, you know, obituaries and create your own obituary. You know, if you think about living versus aging and, and the mindset, you know, there, there's, a, there's something you've got to watch out for that. In this, in this world 
that we're in, especially for the, for the boomer generation, language matters. And if you start with the wrong language, you will, you will, um, you will not be rewarded. Uh, we, we actually move fast. So I, 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 I'm not sure. Yeah. That was a little bit ahead of their time, perhaps. That's it. I was going to say perhaps it's timing. Oftentimes, the first innovators, you know, you have to fine tune it. And you don't quite get it right. And maybe with trying to put the emphasis on the positive, the obits, while interesting, maybe that wasn't the way to go so much. I mean, yeah. you know, they, they, they'll probably work yeah. it out. I'm sure you're going to see something else that comes along, a reinvention of that. Sure. Um, because as the boomers and the silvers become more comfortable, with the online socialization, the social networking, um, there'll, there'll be a need for it, you know, because I think we're just at the beginning of that. Yeah. Well, 50 plus is on Facebook. It wasn't right. designed for Facebook. Right. I mean, it wasn't designed for the 50 plus. We're on LinkedIn, we're, you know, on Twitter. So. Well, you um, copied it on purpose, too. And I read something that said eons.com failed because the only connection for everyone, the only common commonality was age. And you can't just ah, put a bunch of yeah. That's a good people point, too. With, Great that's point. the only thing. Yeah. So Great I don't point. know if you, yeah. No, I, I, I yes. You agree. Uh, especially that purpose uh, Interest, purpose, piece passion. Is yeah. passion. The, the, the passions and stop at 50. You got to you know, nail into that. Um, I've been told one more question or no? Yeah, it's a one, quick more, one. one more question, then we're. Actually, it might be more of a comment. Good morning, I'm Nancy Padberg, CEO of Navigate Boomer Media. And actually, Eons is doing quite well. Um, the CEO is here. Um, we have 140 websites for baby boomers, OK? so. Websites are doing great for boomers, whether they're gardening, they're quilting, or crafting. They are online and spending 15 hours a week, so more than teenagers. Mm -hmm. So I really ask people, and you'll see throughout the day to find out that boomers are online. And to your point, Facebook really, they were the drivers of that woman 50 plus because they're the natural connectors. But if you look at their passion, getting back to their passions, that's what they're doing. They're buying, buying Harley Davidsons. They're buying Corvettes. Yeah. That's where they are. They're on those sites. So that's what we have found at our company. That is good. And that's, that's it. That's putting together the passions. Yeah, uh, that's exactly right. And, and I, I think you'll see growth in that yeah. space. And, uh, sure, because people don't want to be identified just by your age. I mean, you know, there's so much, that's just a number. Age is a number. So. Um, Except with you guys, it hits at about 50. <laughs> Part of your, your deal. The 50th and your 50s. So, <laughs> exactly. Um. Wonderful. Well, I want, let's all give it up for Emilio Pardo and Alex Witt. I thought they were fantastic.